Hey guys, today we're delving into a pivotal moment in the recent episode of Ahsoka that goes far beyond just being fan service. We're talking about the sequence on Mandalore with Rex, and how, to me, it's an essential piece in the puzzle of Ahsoka's journey and Anakin's fall to the dark side. So, buckle up, because trust me, it's way deeper than you might think. To start, let's just talk about this scene. That unforgettable moment on Mandalore with Rex was carefully crafted to remind us of the exact instances when Ahsoka was absent from Anakin's side, right when he was on the path to becoming Darth Vader. Just sit here and think about it. For years, Ahsoka has carried the weight of wondering if I had only been there for him. And this isn't just a far-fetched interpretation. Dave Filoni, the mastermind behind this series, has left us breadcrumbs throughout. Remember how it was mentioned at the start of the series how Ahsoka left Sabine? This directly parallels her same departure from Anakin. It's evident that she blames herself for Anakin's fall by not being there when he might have needed her the most during, you know, his darkest moments. That's precisely the flashback we witnessed during that gripping episode. Ahsoka even mentions to Anakin that he wasn't there with her during the fight on Mandalore. This is Filoni's way of making us reflect, you know, where was he? Where was Anakin? Oh right, he's literally becoming Darth Vader at this very moment. If you compare the timelines, during the Siege of Mandalore, Anakin is on Grievous' ship, trying to rescue the Chancellor and eventually killing Dooku. Order 66 and Anakin's fall to the dark side wasn't just a turning point for the galaxy. It was life-altering for Ahsoka. She lost her master, she lost her friends, and her freedom. This is where the trauma sets in, a moment she'll have to confront and overcome, as we've witnessed in this episode. I tend to get frustrated when people write off these amazing moments just because of a cameo. Rex was an essential character in Ahsoka's life. The term fan service, in my opinion, is so overused, and it feels like Star Wars haters just blind themselves with negativity. And just to have a small rant, so let's just dive into the term fan service. First off, what exactly is fan service? It's often used to describe moments or elements in a story that are seen as catering to the desires or expectations of the fans. But in my opinion, here's the problem. Let's, you know, just say in the Star Wars universe, almost everything can be interpreted as fan service because, well, it's a franchise built on the passion of its love and fans. So talking about cameos, whenever a familiar character pops up, it's immediately labeled as fan service. But hold on a second. These characters are an integral part of the Star Wars universe. They have their own stories, their own journeys, and their own connections to the events unfolding. So why shouldn't they appear when it makes sense in the narrative? Obviously, the counter to that is when it doesn't make sense. And there has been cases for this, but there have been more positive cases than negative cases. So it really does my head in when people just jump the gun straight away and go, oh, this is fan service, this is fan service. It's good for the story, sometimes. And what's wrong with giving the fans what they want? Star Wars fans are some of the most dedicated and loyal fans out there. We've invested years of our lives into this universe. And yes, we have certain expectations. Is it really too much to ask for some payoff to our years of dedication? But here's the kicker. When fan service is used intelligently, it enhances the story. It's not just about throwing in a character for the sake of it. It's about enriching the narrative, deepening the connections between characters, and expanding the lore when it's done right. And when it is, it's a beautiful homage to the fans and a testament to the creator's understanding of the Star Wars universe. I agree, it has been done poorly in recent times, and... Honestly, I think with Dave Filoni, someone who does understand Star Wars, it is much better. But next time someone throws around the term fan service like it's a dirty word, remind them that Star Wars at its core is about the fans. It's about the collective love and passion that has kept this galaxy alive for over four decades. So if that means giving us moments that make us cheer, cry, and feel like kids again, then call it fan service all you want. We'll gladly take it and we'll love every minute of it. But enough of that, heading back to Ahsoka. There are so many instances in this episode that are crucial to show the audience, to show where Ahsoka is, 
important moments in her life that build her into who she is now, and how she needed to let go and turn into a new Ahsoka, a changed Ahsoka, you know, Ahsoka the White. So, for me, this isn't just fan service. It's a profound exploration of Ahsoka's character and her connection to Anakin's fall. It's about choosing to live and living with a greater purpose. So next time you rewatch that sequence, remember the depth and emotion it holds. Because trust me, you will enjoy it even more. Anyway, what do you think? Do you think this is valid? Do you guys agree or not agree that this was just fan service? Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Please do like this video if you enjoyed it and make sure to subscribe. I've been pumping out Ahsoka content like crazy over the last week, and I'd love it if you'd join me. In the meantime, have a great day, and I'll catch you in my next video tomorrow. Cheers.